Layout 2022 introduces Zoom selection, a bunch of new auto text features, including viewport based auto text, some new page related auto text and sequential auto text. They've added a few new scrapbooks using these new auto text features so you can get started using them right away. We also have find and replace as well as a number of bug fixes and improvements. Now, I also have a review video of the new features in SketchUp Pro if you haven't seen that already. I'll link to that and you can see it above and below um, so you can watch that next. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at each of these new features. Zoom selection is a new feature allowing you to fill your screen with whatever you currently have selected. You can find it in the context menu by right clicking on an object or a selection. Now make sure you're not clicking on a blank part of the page. You need to make sure you're right clicking on the actual selected object itself. Otherwise you'll only see the page context menu. Now the better way to use this would be to tap the keyboard shortcut which is Alt Z by default, and then Shift Z will zoom to the page. So by combining both of these features, it allows you to quickly zoom in and out to any part of your document without having to scroll endlessly. Now, zooming on large projects can be especially laggy and painful, so this new feature seems to offer a faster way to navigate large projects. All right, the next feature I wanna talk about is the new viewport-based auto text tags. Now, if you don't know what auto text is, it's a feature which allows you to insert a special string of characters called an auto text tag into any text field in layout. And when you finish typing, the auto text will automatically convert to show some predetermined value, whether it's a custom bit of text, a date, page number, or some other dynamic value. And in layout 2022, we have several new auto text tags available Available to use, starting with five new viewport based auto text tags that can be used with the label tool. So currently, when you anchor a label to a SketchUp entity in a viewport, you can click this arrow and select one of these auto text tags, which will display metadata of whatever entity you anchored the label to. And you have access to the entire hierarchy of nested groups and components. Now, if you'd like to learn more about this feature, I've got a whole section on it in my book, SketchUp to Layout, second edition. And actually, here it is right here. So you can check that out. Um, I have it linked below and I go into how you can add custom metadata to your model using IFC and dynamic components. So that's right here. And so I, I show you how to add those attributes to the model and then how to access those attributes inside of layout. So link below if you want to purchase the book. There's also, uh, you can also find it on Amazon. But back in layout, you'll notice here at the top, we have a new entity called viewport, and we can choose from the scene name, scene description, and viewport scale. So when you create a viewport and select a scene, you can show either the scene name or scene description, which you can edit in the scene panel in SketchUp if you have the advanced attributes expanded here. Now I'm going to do a separate video going into how to hide label leader lines and how you can use these new pre-built scrapbooks that utilize the new auto text tag. So make sure to subscribe so you get a notification when that video comes out. And in addition to the scene and scale auto text tags, we also have the section name and section symbol auto text. And I've set up a few examples here to show you how this works. So I have three boxes, three groups. The first one has a section through it, but I've hidden the section plane. So all we're seeing here is the section fill. In the second box, I have the section plane visible along with the section fill. And in the third box, we have the section plane, but the section is deactivated. So in layout, what we can do is grab the label tool and you can either 
anchor a label to a section fill. So even if the section plane is hidden, if all section planes are hidden or just that specific one is hidden and we can retrieve the section plane name or symbol, um, you can also anchor. So like if I anchor over here, we can also retrieve the section plane name and symbol. And then finally, if the section is deactivated, you can still retrieve it by anchoring to the face of the section plane itself. Now, one limitation here is if you're in like a plan view and you're trying to grab a section plane. Um, so, you know, I was thinking a scenario, maybe if you want to, if you don't want to use these symbols in your plan view or whatever, you, you might use this feature to temporarily show the section plane, come over here and, you know, grab the auto text and then change the style to hide the plane. So that way you're left with this text. But unfortunately, I, I don't see, I don't think it's possible. I don't think you can actually um, grab an inference when you're looking at the section plane uh, from a, an, an orthographic, you know, perpendicular view. I think you have to um, be able to visually see the section plane face or section fill face itself. So a practical example would be something like this, where you see the section fill and then you come in here and uh, refer to that uh, section plane name or symbol just like this. Next, we have the coordinates auto text tag. Now this will allow you to display the X, Y, and Z coordinates of edges, faces, and points in your model relative to the current axis position. So what's really cool about this feature is you can provide parameters within the auto text tag to specify which coordinates you'd like to output. So for example, if you just want the Z coordinate, you can type in coordinates Z in parentheses, and it'll just show the Z coordinate. So this is really handy for elevations where you want to display the height. And since the coordinates are relative to the current axes, you can actually move the axes in your model wherever you want and save it to a scene. And then the coordinates will automatically calculate based on the new axes position. And remember, you can always insert custom text outside of the auto text tag itself. Um, so it'll be displayed in the label or text box. All right, so that wraps up the viewport auto text, but we also have a couple of new page management auto text tags too, starting with page count. So the page count auto text tag will display the total number of pages in the document or you can customize the parameters similarly to how the page number auto text tag works, where you can set a custom starting page and a custom value to start counting from, which allows you to maintain page counts across multiple documents if you have your project split up across multiple layout files. So ultimately, this will allow you to create an auto text like this, where you can show you know, page one of 10 or however many pages there, there are in the document. And you place this on a shared layer and it'll automatically update according to which page it's being displayed on. There's also a new feature to the page name auto text. So it'll now allow you to input a parameter inside the auto text tag so you can output the page name of a specific page of your choosing instead of just the current page that the auto text is on. So uh, you just include the page number within parentheses in the auto text and it will show the name of that page and it will be automatically updated if the pages are shuffled around or edited. So this is great for indexes and tables of contents, and there's a sample sheet index in the scrapbooks for you to explore as well. And the last new auto text tag type we have is sequence. A sequence auto text tag will automatically increment when duplicated, and sequences are document scoped, so 
if you continue copying a sequence on a separate page, it's gonna continue where you left off. So when you create a sequence auto text tag, you can choose from several styles. Uh, you can set the number you'd like the sequence to start from and the increment interval. Now, the format field allows you to insert additional text around the counter output, which you need to designate with these three hashtags, but you can put whatever you want around it. Now, there is a parameter input option for sequences where you can define a specific sequence position for a specific auto text copy. But honestly, I'm having a hard time understanding why you do this. Like, Maybe it's something obvious that I'm not thinking of, but I feel like if you're trying to maintain like multiple copies of a specific instance in a sequence, you're probably better off just creating a custom text auto text tag and then you can use that to control the output. I read the release notes and it mentions a scenario where you could use find and replace to replace the parameter with something different, but since the parameter is literally just a number representing the position in a sequence, it seems like that would be pretty unreliable um, and you'd be picking up a bunch of numbers throughout the document that you don't actually want to change. So I, I'm not really sure about that specific feature. But with sequences, if you delete any instances of your sequence, you can right click any of the sequence instances and choose renumber sequence to refresh the count. And the last new feature we have is find and replace. So control F will bring up the find and replace dialog and it behaves pretty uh, pretty much as you'd expect. So you type in a word or a set of characters and you can either just find those uh, where those occurrences are. So by clicking next, it'll show you where it found um, that word. Or if you want to replace, you can just type in uh, whatever you want to replace these characters with. You can change the scope as to where it'll search for um, those characters and choose uh, a number of options here. And then you can just click one button to replace all and it'll go through the entire um, scope to find and replace. So in this case, it found and replaced 12 instances of the word section and replaced it with the word page. All right, so that's gonna do it for the new layout features. They've also updated the DWG import export library and made some uh, bug fixes and miscellaneous improvements. So let me know what you think of these new features in the comments below and make sure you subscribe so you're notified when I come out with that video uh, diving deeper into the new auto text features. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.